Today I just got my utility bill for the last two months, well about the last two months, from October 17th to December 19th, something like that. Total of 63 days. Today I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to break down the energy consumption that I use for my hybrid passive solar greenhouse and this heated poly tunnel. I'm going to show you guys the energy that we've used versus the production that we've done on the farm. So. For the most part, what we've been doing is producing lettuce out of this greenhouse and microgreens like sunflower shoots and pea shoots in the nursery greenhouse here. So, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, hey Curtis, is this actually profitable what you're doing? You're, you're growing all this stuff, you're, you're running heaters and fans, is it actually profitable to grow all this stuff and I'm gonna break that down for you guys. I'm gonna show you the numbers and I'm gonna break down the kilowatt hour usage and the cost. So one thing that is important to understand in my context here is that I'm in British Columbia. We probably have some of the lowest energy prices in the world. Our, right now the top tier that I'm paying is 15 cents per kilowatt hour. The bottom tier is nine cents per kilowatt hour. And I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you guys some spreadsheets, show you guys some numbers. You know, I'm growing stuff like this all winter long, supplementing my light. I've got circulation fans in here. I've got two 6,000 kilowatt electric heaters that are running in this greenhouse and the other one. And I'm also running, you know, we've got different power in here. Like I run my, my salad spinners over there, my bubbler. I've got my walk-in cooler running 24-7. The heat pump for the passive solar greenhouse is also running. So when we look at these numbers, we need to factor in that these are the things that I'm running to operate our farm throughout the winter. And one other thing to point out is I am installing a 11 and a half kilowatt solar system on the roof of my house. As soon as the, the snow melts off on the roof, we can get on there and install it. So I am looking at for the rest of the winter, once we get this installed, that I'll be subsidizing my electric bill about 70% throughout the year. So that's something to consider too. So yes, right now I am spending quite a bit of energy, but it still is profitable and by the numbers I think you'll see that. So this is how it breaks down. So this chart up here, this, this, um, this list here shows our weekly revenues during the time that we're talking about. So we're talking about look over here, here's my bill, October 17th through December 19th. So it's a 63 day period and I've broken down my weekly revenues on the farm for the winter. So we make less, a lot less money in the winter than we do in the summer just because we basically consolidated our production down to these two greenhouses that you see here. And so these are our weekly revenues and so the total revenue that we generated from product sales for this 63 day period was just under ten thousand dollars ninety eight hundred dollars and here's my energy use so i just based this on my bill so my total kilowatt hour usage for those 63 days was eight thousand five hundred and fifty three what i did here is i just kind of broke it down on speculative usage per week looking at i kind of just took the total number and then just split the number up based on what my temperatures were at that time. So my obvious, you know, the most amount of time I was used, the, the most amount of kilowatt hours I was using was this period here, December 5th through December 18th. That was the coldest time during this whole period. So I just kind of took the number and split it up by the week based on, you know, how much I think I'm using. But the total number is what's really important down here, 8,553 8, kilowatt hours for that period. Then what I did is I broke it down based on the money it cost me. So if you look up here on my bill, we get billed based on our time and our the, the block usage. So um, you know, again, keep in mind that my energy costs in British Columbia because we're hydroelectric is a lot cheaper than it would be in say California, like I said before. So my my second tier pricing, which is this one here, block two. 
um, 6,900 kilowatt hours were billed at 15 cents a kilowatt hour, whereas the first 1,600 kilowatt hours are billed at 9.8 cents a kilowatt hour. So I kind of just broke this down as that's how much I was spending during these weeks. So during the week of December 12th through December 18th, I paid $300 for the use of my electric to run both of those greenhouses. So I put these onto charts here. So here's the blue bars are how much money the farm was producing and then the red bars are how much energy cost we were spending during that time. So you can see here even at what we're spending right now, you know, and having a $1,300 bill, um, understanding that probably most of that was from December, we're still making money. So if you look at December here, you know, we had a really good week in uh, December, uh, November 28th through December 4th, and our energy costs were about here, you know, $300, a little less than $300. So even at that price point, we're, st we're still making money. You know, of course, you're going to factor in labor, cost of production, like l look at my seed costs for my microgreens, stuff like that. Um, but we're still making money. We're, this is still profitable. So the reason I'm not putting in all the labor and stuff like that is because this is going to depend. I want you guys to look at this and maybe apply this to your own situation, but it's going to depend for you. So, um, you know, in my own context, I broke down the labor and all that, and we're, we still have a profit. So we're doing just fine. But again, I want to have some universality to this so you guys can look at this and apply it to your own situation. So during this time... Um, uh, for most of the, pretty much all of December, we were getting down to minus 17 degrees Celsius. So well below freezing, very, very cold temperatures. And during that time, the lettuce tunnel dipped down a couple times at night below freezing. The nice thing about lettuce is that it can handle that kind of temperature swing. So it didn't affect our production, though it does affect the, the amount the things regrow. So you got to factor that in. But what I'm putting in here that is interesting, so this other chart here is going to outline what I expect or anticipate to save when I put on solar. So I am putting an 11 and a half kilowatt um, solar system on the entire roof of my house. And that is basically going to subsidize my energy use by about 70% overall, so a year the total year. I'm going to generate more in the summer as I do in the winter, of course, but I'm also going to take, I'm going to use more energy in the winter than I do in the summer. But this system that I'm installing is a grid tied system and I'm going to have more videos about this. You guys, you, I'm going to do a video with my buddy Landon who's putting the system in for me. You're going to see this whole thing play out. But this, these are the kind of energy savings we're looking to create through this process. Um, so this second chart here outlines that. So I've basically discounted my solar or my energy use in this chart here by 70%. And then I've applied that to just say my same production as last year. This is going into 2017. This is what we could expect to generate and, you know, minus our cost of production and all that kind of stuff versus our profit. So that's this chart here. And you can see it's a lot more attractive. So you know, solar is one of these things that it's it's cost effective if you're using a lot of energy or your energy bills are higher. For us in British Columbia, we're going to see a price increase going into 2017. So I'm looking at this as a good investment because my farm is where I live and I use a lot of power here. So um, I guess, you know, the part of the reason I wanted to show this to you guys is that I had a number of people make comments in the videos over the last few weeks when I was showing the greenhouses and especially when I was building that new one. People saying, Curtis, why don't you use a propane heater and all that kind of stuff? And this is the reason. It's because I'm going to go solar and so um, I wanted to kind of break down the cost. So I understand that it is very probable that propane energy would probably be cheaper. Uh, maybe not so much in British Columbia because our hydro prices are so low. But in other provinces or states or countries, propane is probably cheaper. So definitely keep that in mind. But, you know, I just wanted to show you guys this is how it all plays out. Well, I hope you guys have found that helpful. You can basically take that, take those numbers and apply them to your situation and then figure out, you know, is this actually going to work for you? 
Depends where you are. You know, a place like California pays double the amount of energy costs that we do here. However, they wouldn't need to heat their greenhouses in the same way that I do here. The beginning of December and late November was the coldest months we've had here in a long time. So I'm definitely using more energy in those months than I will other months. You know, January, February has yet to be seen, but typically here it starts to warm up a little bit more around that time. So we'll definitely see how that plays out. I got to tell you too, this content is totally based on questions that I get in the comments that you guys leave on the video. So thank you for continuously contributing to the ideas on my channel and helping me craft better information that can help you guys because at the end of the day what I want to see is more people get into farming and I want to help people try to get a better understanding of how they can do that and how they can apply these practices in their own context. So thank you very much. If I don't talk to you before then, happy new year and happy holidays. Talk to you soon.